Ah, one, two, three, four. All right, grappling with the text, we're continuing in First Peter, chapter three, uh, verses uh, seven and following. Uh, in fact, I just want to take up this text right here because last week uh, we talked about the ladies, which is obvious from this picture. <laughs> so today we got to take up the fellas, uh, husbands. Here it was wives. And remember, we're in the section on the table of duties, so Peter's instruction for wives. And now we're going to take up this uh, instructions, Peter's instructions for husbands. Uh, it, husbands in the same way. So, uh, so there's a, a, look at how this pattern. In the same way, wives. In the same way, husbands. So that there is a, there's a sameness when it comes to the table of duties. And what is this sameness? What is the thing that unites all the table of duties? Why, that, that How it is for wives is the same as it is for husbands. And how it is for husbands is the same as it is for servants. And children, it's the same. Same, same, same. Be, in fact, it's going to come down here, be like-minded. That's for next week. What's the same? Well, the same is love. Love is what binds all the vocations together. Uh, remember how Paul says this in Romans. Love is the fulfilling of, law, of the law. Love does no harm to the neighbor. So if you, if you were to take all ten commandments and you were to put them in a dehydrator and you boil them down, you have this. Love God and love your neighbor. And then if you keep going, if you just keep going, you get down to this word, love. Now, the, the danger, as we boil down the sameness of all of the different table of duties and we get to love, is that we take love then to be some sort of abstraction, forgetting that love has its various concrete forms precisely in the commandments. So, just as an example, my love for my children looks very different than my love for my wife. My love for my wife looks very different than my love for the parishioners. My love for my parishioners looks very different than my love for my elected officials and so forth. So that love is not an abstraction, but it takes specific form to the Ten Commandments. So, so here, uh, remember how it was with wives? They live in their vocation by being subject to their husbands. Husbands, in the same way, live with your wives according to knowledge, giving honor to the woman as to the weaker vessel, as also being joint heirs of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. So that the way that that husbands live together with their wives is by uh, loving them uh, and honoring them. Now, look at what it says here. Live with your. There's probably three points that we want to make from this text uh, as we dig into it. So it says, husbands, live with your wives according to knowledge. In other words, don't live uh, at home in your families like a fool. Uh, don't, uh, be the head of the household. This is one of the great dangers that we face in our culture. That when you um, that when you see a husband, what you see is a fool. Uh, you know, the, the the just the typical characters. You just turn on the TV, and if there's a man there, he's a fool. And the thing that he loves to do is sit on the couch and drink beer and watch football. And that he has no idea what's going on. And that the wives are really the ones that run the house, and so forth, and so on, etc. Peter says, do not be a fool. There's a particular wisdom required to be head of household, to be a husband. And you should have that, uh, uh, you should have that wisdom. This knowledge, of course, always in the scripture, there's going to be a twofold knowledge or a twofold wisdom. Uh, and that is first, according to the law, and second, according to the gospel. Okay? Then, second, live according to your wives according to knowledge. Second, give honor to the woman as to the weaker vessel. Now, this vessel is a metaphor here, and this is making a comparison. You know, each, uh, each house, each home will have kind of has two sets of dishes. This is the two sets of dishes. This is what they look like in our house. You have your everyday dishes, uh, everyday dishes, and then you have the good stuff. You have the china. This is the stuff that you bring out for Easter and for Christmas and so forth. Now, your everyday dishes, you eat on them, you, you, they get chipped, they go in the dishwasher, etc. Remember the hassle with Easter dinner and so forth is that after you eat on the china and you can't put the stuff in the dishwasher. you got to hand wash it and put it away nicely and all this sort of stuff. Peter is saying, hey, do this with the wives. The, the more fragile and delicate vessels, treat them with this great tenderness and with this honor. 
I remember uh, when we were, uh, Carrie and I were learning how to dance. Our ballroom uh, instructor was so great. He, he says, women, your job is to follow. That was last week. Your job is to follow. And so he says, so if there's a mistake, if, you're, uh, if your partner makes a mistake on the dance floor, floor, whose fault is it? And all the women says, their fault. And he says, no, it's yours. If your husband makes a mistake, it's your fault because you're supposed to follow him. It was great. And then he looks at the husbands and he says, what's your job out there on the dance? You guys want me to draw a husband and wife dancing here? Okay, fine. And there's the woman da, 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 dancing. la di dee what is your job, husbands, on the dance floor? What are you supposed to do? Uh, and the husband said, to lead. And, he, and the guy says, no, your job is to make your wife look good. <laughs> this guy was great. And this is the perfect thing. So that husbands are honoring, holding up, extolling their wives, etc. Now, this weaker word might trip us up a little bit because we just, you know, we think, I don't know, it's an insult. Of course it's not an insult. Uh, the Lord uh, loves all of his people, the wives and the husbands, etc., etc. He's not making fun of them or anything like this. But there's a tenderness to women, and not just a physical tenderness, but there's a, some other sort of tenderness. Uh, you know, the, the, the Lord has given men bodies useful for bearing plows and bearing... This is what a plow looks like. Bearing plows and bearing swords... Uh, the Lord has given women bodies that are so perfectly fit for bearing children so that the the boys are supposed to get out there to take the bullets and the arrows and the wives are built um, for, for, um, for a more tender art. And so they are to be protected. This, by the way, is part of the reason why in Christian cultures it's always the men who go off to war. The men go off to die precisely to protect the women and the children. So, husbands, live to w- with your wives according to knowledge. Give honor to the woman as to the weaker vessel, and also as being joint heirs of the grace of life. In other words, you look at your wife not only according to the first article and her created gifts, but also according to the second article. And according to the second article, according to the article of redemption, according to the article of the death of Jesus, you are joint heirs of the grace of life. It's not like the Lord came to save the husbands and leave the wives behind. No, we are all together in the church. And in fact, this, this idea right here, being joint heirs, also goes back to the previous comment about servants and masters. That, that masters and servants are to deal with each other no, knowing that we're both in the church. So husbands and wives are to deal with each other knowing that we both are in the church. Both the husband and the wife have a brother, Jesus, and a father who is God. And then look at this. That this, these two activities, living with your wives according to knowledge, giving honor to the woman as a, as a weaker vessel, recognizing that you're joint heirs of, Christ, uh, of, of the Lord's redemption, it has a reason, and it is that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, I don't know 100% what to make of this, but, uh, but I think at least that we see here Peter indicating that if we have lives that are out of order, again, this is all a talk of order, if we have lives that are out of order according to any of the estates, according to the state, or especially according to the family, or according to the church, that there are spiritual consequences here. And, he, and, and if things are out of order in the family, if the husband isn't living uh, according to knowledge, with honoring his wife and so forth, that it, it has a spiritual effect and his, and his prayers are hindered. Uh, so, something maybe. Like what St. John says in 1 John, where he says, uh, if you don't love your brother who you see, how can you love God who you don't see? So, uh, husbands, give particular attention that you deal with your wives as tender and precious uh, vessels, taking care of them, blessing them, protecting them, laying down your lives for them, loving them, living together with them according to knowledge. And taking these two things together, this is really quite beautiful, taking the picture of the wife adorned uh, with godliness and taking the picture of the husband living together in tenderness, you have a picture of the Christian marriage. Beautiful, really. And it's no wonder that St. Paul, for example, in Ephesians 5, is going to say that marriage is a picture of how it is with Christ, the bridegroom, and his bride, the church. Okay, there it is. Instructions for husbands, instructions for wives. Let's call it quits. That's First Peter 3.7. Uh, next week we'll take it up at verse 8 and, uh, and push through there. 
all of you. So Peter talked about servants and wives and husbands and so forth, citizens. Now he's going to talk about everyone. We'll take that up next time. Thanks for grappling with the text with us. Remember, we're looking for 25 thumbs up. That's what that looks like. And 25 comments. That's the big one. I appreciate you guys always commenting. It's really nice uh, to see you guys engaging in the text uh, and engaging in the videos. Uh, it makes my my heart warm. Uh, it boils over with a pleasant theme. So thanks for doing that. See you next time. Worldview Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, ten, or twenty-five dollars is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click donate now. Jesus.